Hi everyone, today we are going to be giving my kitchen a little makeover. I haven't done anything with this space since we moved in five years ago, and if I'm being honest, it's been my least favorite room in the house, looks wise, for a while now. This is not our forever home, so I don't want to dump a lot of money into this kitchen, and as much as I have thought about painting the cabinets white, it feels like a lot of effort when I don't want to replace the countertop or floors. Also, thinking about sanding the nooks and crannies in that beadboard texture makes me want to die a little. So I am challenging myself to make this brown wood tone kitchen into something that fits my tastes a little better. The first place I like to start any makeover is Pinterest. I found these two cute kitchens with wood cabinets similar to my own that both had black hardware and white subway tile backsplashes. I use these photos as my main inspiration for this project. The first thing I'm doing is removing this cabinet on the end. It's attached to the stud in the wall with two long wood screws that are capped off on the inside. Before removing the screws, I cut the caulking around the edges of the cabinet with a utility knife so that when I removed it, it didn't take too much of the paint or drywall with it. Even after removing the screws, it needed a little bit of a wiggle to get it off the wall. Once the cabinet was off, I found this mysterious note from the contractor that built the house and a few small holes that needed patching. I sanded down some of the paint seams and then used this joint compound to fill in the areas that needed it. I really love this stuff because it doesn't need to be sanded down. You can just smooth it out with a damp cloth and avoid the dusty mess of sanding. I use it for all my drywall patching needs. Once my joint compound patches were dry and smoothed out, I used a mixture of joint compound and water on a chip brush to apply texture to the patches. This was my first time using this method. I tried it because I recently used the spray on wall texture that comes in a can, and I wasn't happy with the results or the smell of propellant in my house. If you have any hot tips for matching wall texture, please leave them in the comments below. When my patches were textured and dry, I primed the area with two coats of this Valspar drywall primer and painted it. I only used a brush for this because I didn't have an extra roller handy and it's such a small area. The color I'm using is Calico Cream by Sherwin-Williams. Now it's time to install the floating shelves. I really like this type of shelf hardware because it feels sturdier to me than the floating shelves that hang on the wall with a keyhole hanger. They're also easier to install in my opinion. It already looks so much more open and bright with that cabinet gone. Next, I'm going to be installing the new cabinet hardware. The hardware I currently have is a single hole knob, and since I'm putting these handles on all of the cabinets, I need to drill a second hole on each one. I made this template out of blue tape so that I know exactly where to mark and drill the holes.
For the drawers, I'm adding these black shell pulls. I had originally planned to put the black shells on all of my drawers, but my top cabinets are too narrow for them to fit. I picked up a pack of these plain black knobs, but I wasn't liking the way that they looked. I decided to try these antique style embossed black knobs from Amazon and I love them. I will link all my hardware in the video description below if you're interested. Now I'm moving on to what became the main event in this makeover, the backsplash. For the backsplash, I used these white porcelain 10 by 11 inch subway tile mosaic sheets. To cut the tile, I used two methods. The first is this snap cutter, which was really affordable and easy to use. The only downside is that because it cuts through the entire tile by scoring and snapping it on the scored line, you can only make straight cuts. So for more complicated angles like around outlets and power switches, I use this diamond cutting wheel attachment on my rotary tool. I'm not sure I would recommend this method. It worked out fine for my job, sort of, I'll tell you more about it later, because I was able to hide all of my imperfect cuts with outlet and switch cover plates. But if you have a cut that will be visible, you might not be able to achieve a clean enough cut and you should probably use a more appropriate tool like a wet tile saw. I attach the tiles to the wall using this tile adhesive and a notched trowel. The section of the wall I'm tiling under the cabinets fits one of the tile mosaic sheets and a row of single tiles below it. The installation was slow going as I was trying to get everything as level as possible, but the time invested was worth the effort in the end. I used tiles cut long ways to fill the gap underneath the stove hood. I'm pretty sure you could just buy some trim pieces for this part and make it easier on yourself, but the cut pieces worked okay too. Before each new section, I used my level to draw a guideline of where to place the tiles. I had to cut a small notch and a few sections of trim along the bottom of my cabinet so the tile could fit underneath them. To do this, I used a handsaw to cut in about three quarters of an inch and then drilled through the top of my cut and removed the piece. It was a bit of an awkward angle so the saw left some scuffs on the wall, but it's underneath where the tile is going anyway, so it's fine. This diamond cutting wheel lasted exactly long enough to finish this project, to finish cutting around the outlets. Unfortunately for me, I miscut this piece. Let me show you. As I was saying, I miscut this piece. You can see here where it should go like to here, like the cut should have been like here and here, but instead for whatever reason, I guess because I just loosely roughly traced it over this outlet, I. I don't know. I overtraced it and the line isn't covered by the outlet cover just by like that much. So uh, then the diamond wheel crapped out on me and won't cut anymore. So now I gotta figure out how to recut a piece and finish the job. All right, after a little bit of stewing, I have come up with a solution. 
old piece. This is a new piece just cut at an angle with my lovely handy dandy snap cutter. I'm so happy that I don't have to go buy another cutting wheel or do anything crazy because I just cut it at an angle so that it doesn't obstruct the screw and we are good. I'm gonna install it now and then that will complete the tile installation. Well, not the whole installation, but just, you know, the laying of the tile. After my minor tile cutting kerfuffle, it was time to grout. I actually really enjoyed the grouting process. I'm using this pre-mixed black grout to add a little bit of contrast and also complement the black hardware that I'm using on my kitchen cabinets. It has a consistency similar to moon sand and was pretty fun to smooth around the tile with the grout float. I watched a video by Home Renovations on grouting tile. I will link it in the description below. He recommended applying the grout at a 45 degree angle so that you don't dig out your grout lines as you go. Also having a clean surface below you so that you can scoop up any grout you drop. I did my best to apply these tips to my grouting job. After applying the grout and letting it set up for about 20 minutes, I wiped off the excess with a damp sponge. It was a pretty hot day and the grout was drying quickly, so I got my husband to help with the process. It saved me a lot of time and arm strength. application was pretty slow which gave the grout a lot of time to set up and left me with some unevenness in my grout lines. Luckily I found this great tip by Weekend Warrior to use a rounded wood handle of a foam brush to clean up the lines. It's great because the rounded handle won't remove too much of your grout from your grout lines and the wood won't scratch the surface of the tile. After all my grout lines are clean, I added caulking around the edges of my backsplash. I used frog tape to ensure that my caulking lines are straight. Just be sure to remove the tape before the caulk dries. Here's a satisfying tape removal montage for you all. Now for the most fun part of any makeover, the decorating. I use decor items from all over the place and some of them are thrifted like this brass teapot that I'm obsessed with, but I will link what I can in the description below.
I'm actually surprised at how much I love how my kitchen turned out. I was so ready to paint these cabinets, but now I actually like the warm wood tones. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram at happyhomemama.diy and subscribe to my channel for more DIY videos like this one. Have a great day.